invented by Jose Antonio Abreu. The idea was to teach children in slums classical music. You would say, what's that about? Why would I do this? Uh, it, it is more or less the same concept like with sports. Um, music and sport uh, requires a certain discipline. Uh, you remember the, the whole idea with safety and security, the whole family compositions in Venezuela are actually of a kind that there's no father in the family. Uh, young people go into gangs, uh, you know, you find 10 year olds with a clock gun in their belt just walking around on the street uh, and this is a very difficult situation and as you know now, this is not a, a, an, ex an exception, this is unfortunately the rule. You guys here are the exception. That's, uh, I think, also to, to sort of put in our, in our heads. This is the rule, you're the exception. And the rule is also that Gustavo Dudamel and the, the Venezuelan Youth Orchestra are playing in uh, uh, Barrios, this is in La Vega, the Barrio of La Vega. And we were actually, I'm um, standing somewhere here in the crowd, I think this is me, I see with the sunglasses. Um, uh, if you go to those places, you actually feel very clearly that you can translate this sort of society um, desire of, of uh, practicing music, that you can translate that in the building. This is a concert hall. This is not the square of a slum area. This is the logis, this is the stage, this is the audience, this makeshift tech room, it's all there. This is an opera house. This is Fitzgeraldo, not in the jungle of the Amazon, this is Fitzgeraldo in the asphalt jungle of Caracas. and the 
another hall for 500 people. And again, this kid here, Pedro, is not just standing here posing with a trumpet, he lives in this area. Those are real guys, real people. This is not storytelling. You can go there and you can listen to them. They actually have played at the Sao Paulo Biennale at the opening. This is the site after uh, the last year's rainfalls. You know, this is, you see the, those houses simply were sliding down. Quickly grass is growing over them. And this is the project that we proposed, which is this building fit into the hill. Obviously, we, we replaced some of the housing, etc. And we brought a lot of other program in, but I'm hurrying, hurrying up because I want to show you another project at the very end. This is a section through it. And as I tell you, this is a building that not by choice, but by uh, circumstance must use and circulate rainwater, filter it, use grey water, etc. Everything that you might see here as exceptional building somewhere in, in Vorarlberg, Switzerland, south of Germany, in the United States, England, as a sort of a Leeds building, platinum prices, we heard it. Um, those prices, by the way, in, in South America don't exist, but sometimes when we're lucky, um, like in this case, we actually got the Gold Holzen Award, which we have invested 100% in this project. And, I don't know, that was, we, we finished it, okay. So I leave you, maybe, I make a little jump here. I leave you with something that I wanted to explain in a little bit more detail, but I leave you with a, 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 a final impression of our tower study. A tower study, I'm just running through the picture. Do we have five minutes for that? Three, five minutes? Okay, I'm just running through it. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about that, but this tower, uh, we studied it with a grant from Schindler Elevators. So the world leader, actually it's number two after the Americans, Otis is the world leader, it's the number two in elevator um, uh, production, was interested how a skyscraper without an elevator could work. And uh, obviously I told you about it, no facade, no nothing, but they have shops, they have hair cutters, they have gyms, they have sports fields, they even have a church inside, uh, that's the electric table, etc. And I go through the very end to press the button to show you the field. No questions? 
it off. Uh, Ruben, you know, I was questioning myself, are you looking yourself to the program totally? You have no infrastructure, you just think there is infrastructure needed? And then you need the infrastructure project? Now obviously, the, the, uh, you know, we are now in this, in this uh, urban toolbox with the Inter-American Development Bank. We are looking for existing projects. There are a lot of very interesting initiatives out there. The problem is that bottom-up, we worked, Alfredo and I, we worked pretty much bottom-up for 10, 12 years in South America, but we knew there's a limit to that. Um, and we want to we find out now how top-down and bottom-up can finally meet. That's actually the challenge. And there is infrastructure coming, I think people on political levels have identified that this is necessary, but we also need to think ahead. So this investment is made in a more intelligent way and more people will appreciate it once it is in place. Uh, what's about, you, you showed one time, you showed like, that the land was like getting free because of an earthquake or something like this. How do you start normally? Do you have to replace the people or it's like, uh, or you always look to places only where there is, anyway, I think it would be naive to think that people can always stay where they are, because not even you will stay where you are. You might live in a, in a building and then they make one family houses with a higher price and you have to move. This is how cities work. There's gentrification and I think that's actually a natural and a desirable process if, but only if, uh, if you distribute also the, the wealth that you create. Uh, a couple of years ago, most of you might have heard it, there was a, a, a film, a full feature film about Darabi in Mumbai. You remember Darabi? It was in all the news. It is the biggest and most valuable piece of land in any city of the world. It was reserved because it is a slum. People live slum, dwellers live on it. It's horizontal, it has infrastructure, train tracks, the, even the, the main water pipe of Mumbai passes through it. And um, the ideas that haven't um, uh, materialized yet, the ideas were in India, which is not China, uh, in India to find a democratic way to use that land and sort of um, uh, create a, a model where also the people who would have to move elsewhere would somehow be compensated but not not in a, in a, in a, in a, as an excuse and sent out to the suburbs, but that they would be part of the business because somehow they have secured the land. It wouldn't even exist if they wouldn't still have reserved it for future development. You know, when I was in Medellin, because you were talking about Medellin, I was so surprised that the people keep care or take care so much about uh, all these public transport issues. Is this all over or is it just Well, Alejandro would be the right guy to answer that, but I think both Medellin, Caracas, uh, Complejo Alemán in Rio de Janeiro, Moro de Providencia, another project that we um, started in, in Rio, which is just now finished. Um, uh, people do maintain it because they know it is theirs. You know, if you, um, if you introduce the project well and people understand that this is for them and not for somebody else's benefit, they will also take care of it. I think we have to have the trust, but we also have to maintain the structures. I would say maintenance is the number one problem in buildings. Thank you again for your wonderful lecture. Thank you. Thank you.
But Peter is a very unique figure because he's a catalyst for discussion in architecture. And it is a, it's a discussion that is, um, I should say, shrinking in the world. We don't have very often very exciting discussions about this discipline, unlike the musicians who talk among themselves and are very animated about what they're doing today, within the realm of music itself, or the people who are involved in fashion, or the people who are involved in literature. In all of the arts, there is a very lively discourse today about the artistic media themselves. Today, it's a taboo to talk about the artistic media medium of architecture itself, because everything else is so pressing in the practice.